blues. Not just the winter blues, but a more severe version of it called Seasonal Affective Disorder, SAD. I was diagnosed 30 years ago, and over the past 30 years, I've used my professional and personal skills in order to deal with SAD and the winter blues during the winter half of the year. It's been quite a journey, believe me, and I know you're watching this because perhaps you know somebody who has SAD or the winter blues, or because maybe you yourself may have it. And so what I do is I have this blog on Facebook, uh, this Facebook page, and I will update it regularly during the winter season. And I invite you to come and subscribe to the page and um, just be updated uh, every week, uh, sometimes a few times a week, sometimes daily. In the heart of winter, it'll be daily updates. So let me talk about um, an overview. And I'm going to post this at the top of the Facebook page. So it's always the very first um, item on the page for any new visitors who are wondering about SAD and who are wondering about what they can do if they have SAD. And um, by the way, I'll use SAD and winter blues sort of interchangeably. Um, one is simply a very severe version of the other. Everybody has a bit of a touch of the winter blues. If you live in the temperate zone, northerly climates, uh, but some people are very affected by it and have a severe case that is described medically as a syndrome, a winter syndrome, and seasonal affective disorder. So uh, let me begin with just some very, very basics, and then we'll catch up day by day, uh, week by week through the season. And I hope you have a good journey through winter. It doesn't have to be a bad journey. It can be a time of insight. It can be a time of understanding. It can be a time of peace, a time of recollection, a time of renewal for the coming spring. So what is SAD? SAD was identified by Dr. Norman Rosenthal in the 1980s. I was one of his patients at that time. And he said I had one of the most severe cases that he had ever seen. Um, so SAD is a combination of symptoms uh, rather than a single cause that we can identify so far. And it uh, happens because of a, a number of different reasons or a combination of reasons. So let's look at the symptoms of it first, and then let's look at uh, why it happens. Well, the winter blues essentially is a human version of hibernation. Uh, so that's, that's one of the main symptoms that we slow down. Uh, we become lethargic. It becomes harder to do anything. Um, and we sleep more. Very basic aspect of um, SAD. Um, in the summer, we speak, uh, we sleep what we might consider to be normal hours, but there's an extra hour or two that happens in the winter time. Uh, so we're hibernating or semi-hibernating, and this process of going day to day, waking up in the morning, uh, dealing with the day, going back to sleep at night, uh, is not easy. It's not easy for anyone. Um, the other thing is that there's a sleep disturbance that goes with it. Our, our body clocks, our biological clocks are, are off. Uh, our day tends to run a little bit longer than a 24-hour day. Uh, that's true of other people, too. Uh, many people have this, but they don't necessarily have SAD. But people with SAD probably have a 25-hour biological clock. So that means you're going to get up an hour later every day if um, you know you just follow your your rhythms and in the winter time this means that you're going to miss morning light and um, you're going to stay up later at night and both of them have a negative effect mental fogginess a cloudiness that just uh, slows down the mind is part of it too 
Um, probably everyone who has sad has a drop in IQ of 15, 20 points easily in the winter months. I know I am not as sharp and as quick as I am in the summer months. My mental capacity actually goes down. Uh, so it makes it harder to concentrate, it makes it harder to work, it makes it harder to, to, to even follow a plan for dealing with sad. Um, that's another aspect of it. Uh, yeah, easily con contracting winter illnesses, uh, flus, colds, muscle aches and pains, very much part of, of SAD. So that's another characteristic. Another one uh, is connected with that mental fog in some way. It's a different uh, effect of, on the mental processes, but it's uh, what we would describe as uh, uh, ADHD uh, or some form of disorder, attention, an, an attention deficit disorder that we normally associate with children, but uh, it affects people with SAD. And that is why one of the medications for SAD, if you choose to go the route of medications under a doctor's supervision, is a medication that was originally uh, designed for treating uh, uh, attention disorders. And it's actually much more effective than other medications that are dealing with, quote, depression, because SAD is not a classical uh, depression. It's not a, uh, it's not a, it's not a, uh, a, a disorder that is a manic depressive disorder. It's not a classic clinical depression where people will sink into it for a long period of time. Uh, regardless of the season, sad is its own uh, unique <laughs> phenomena. And even though we associate it with depression, um, it's not it's not classic depression. It's, it's something else. And that's probably the most important aspect of the symptoms of sad. Depression can be so debilitating, so debilitating, no matter what kind of depression you have. And so if you have sad, you're going to have a rough, rough time getting through winter. If you only have a touch of sad and you deal with the winter blues, you know, during uh, a shorter period of time, maybe uh, January and February, uh, you know that those are, those are slow days. But if you have a serious case of sad or anything in between, uh, uh, it's going to be longer and it's going to be not just periodic uh, in the sense of a few gray days gives you the winter blues. Um, but the long-term shortening of the day and the angle of the sun uh, affects someone with sad, serious sad or moderate sad uh, every single day through the winter season. So these are the characteristics. And just to go over them again, you know, they're uh, hibernation, sleeping longer, uh, eating a lot of carbohydrates. I didn't mention that before, but uh, there's, there's a diet problem here. People, animals who hibernate, uh, who hibernate will consume um, a lot of um, uh, materials uh, that will give them a sense of contentment. You know, and eating carbohydrates does that. It, uh, we'll talk about that at some other time. So, uh, so you'll put on weight. Almost everybody with SAD puts on weight in the wintertime, and if you're lucky, you'll lose it, or at least some of it, in the following summer. But over the long term of a number of years, you'll slowly creep up uh, in, in your weight. Um, depression, attention disorder, sleep cycle, um, confusion, aches and pains, uh, respiratory illnesses, um, these are all the symptoms. But again, the most important one is a sense of sadness or depression. So what causes this? So this is the second topic for today. What causes it? There are probably three major causes, and they probably work together uh, in harmony in some way. Uh, the first cause is it probably, you know, 